Okay, today we're going to talk about something really important, something that's coming up on May 25th, 2018. So whether you're watching this video before May 25th or after, it is a crucial element to building your blog and or running your blog business or any business for that matter. It doesn't even matter if you have a blog or not. You need to know this. You need to implement this into your business. This is extremely important. This is a, uh, a new regulation that must be followed. It's a basically turning into a worldwide thing. So let me dive into it so we can get into the details. Um, first off, you know, what is the GDPR? The GDPR is the General Data Protection Regulation, and it goes into effect on May 25th, 2018. It was designed and created in the European Union uh, to protect the personal data of European Union citizens. So it was built in Europe and you say, well, you know, if I don't live in Europe. If you do live in Europe, then it's extremely important. If you don't live in Europe, it's still extremely important to you because this affects anyone, anyone who has a European Union citizen visiting and or using your site. Yes, even just visiting your site had the potential to visit your site. Then that's it. You need it. You can say, well, I don't want people from the European Union visiting my site if this is going to be a problem. Well, guess what? You can't control that. You can only control, you know, what you do to protect yourself. So that's why you must follow what I'm going to sh show you here in this video. So it's extremely important. It's a critical element of running your business. Data has just gotten, gotten to be a huge, huge thing worldwide. And it, May 25th, the entire world as we know it on the internet changes. Um, it basically requires cookie and data cons uh, consent and data removal actions by you and your site if requested. You know, everybody from the European Union now has extreme data privacy rights that go above and beyond anything that we, you know, see here, like from where I live here in the United States. And it's regulated by supervisory authority and SA from all the member states in the EU and outside the EU. They have people that are there in other countries that are now taking on uh, the role of, of policing this and handing out some major penalties. Part of this entire regulation also comes with penalties of up to 20 million euros, which was well over $20 million with an exchange rate um, or up to 4% of your business's annual income along with uh you know just small you know infractions to penalties you know getting you to comply with with the law uh small things that they can do to you there's a whole laundry list i'm not a lawyer i'm not going to pretend to be a lawyer but watch this video and you'll be a little bit better prepared than you were before my name is Mike Johnson, and I am the owner, creator of the Starter Academy. And normally I'm trying to get you to buy my blog products, but right now this is a little bit more important because this is something that's going to safeguard you. It's going to safeguard your business. So you need to implement and take action on the things that we're going to talk about in this video. So let's dive into a little bit more of our WordPress specifics and the data that you need to be thinking about. You say, well, what data are you talking about? Well, if people register on your blog, Word, WordPress user registration, if they leave comments, if they contact you through your contact form, analytics like Google Analytics and traffic log solutions, just your host try, does a log of people that visit. Things like AW stats that are in cPanel, if you even know who that is. So um, very common logging tools. Any other logging tools and plugins that you install on your blog, um, security tools and other and related plugins that you install um, and that take different actions and collect user data on your blog. So these are all important things. It's just, just the beginning. This is not even going into things like um, your email marketing tools which we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, things where you want to get consent from the users who are coming to your site. And I know all this sounds a little bit crazy. We jumped in this pretty fast. So let's kind of slow things down and talk a little bit about what this law means. So here are the key elements. 
First off, data security. What they want first and foremost is that people's data is protected and that this, this regulation is focused on data protection and the rights of users to protect their data, you know, and, and not have their data abused. So the first thing they look at is breach notifications. So if you do collect data on your site and for some reason you have a data breach, you've been hacked, you are required to notify everybody that has visited your site and you have their information. If you have contact information for them, um, you require to notify them within 72 hours of the data breach happening. Okay. The second key element that you need, that really the biggest element of this, is the data collection, processing, processing, and storage elements of the law of the regulation, and that has three key elements. It says that a user has a right to access. Their information they have a right to have their data be forgotten meaning it can be anonymized and simply you know removed to where it's it's made that it's not focused on them anymore you might have the data still but it's not um, doesn't correlate to any individual so um, and then it has the right to data portability and what data portability means is that users from the European Union have the right to not just have their data removed from your site, but they need to have the ability to take it with them, to actually be given that data to see what you had on your site. Um, the third part of this is the use of plugins and third-party tools. And this is really just a, it's talking about WordPress specifically. And the, the regulation is not focused on WordPress. It's just simply focused on data and personal privacy but when you use plugins and third-party tools on your blog they must also be GDPR compliant so you need to realize that if you have any any kind of plugins or tools that you're using that collect individuals data thing like a review plugin for instance if you're collecting reviews has to be GDR, uh, GDPR compliant which means it would require a consent box on it for instance you would have to ask for users consent to accept their review with their personal data attached to it uh, and like I said we're gonna get more into this as we go through the video here and show you what I'm talking about and of course you need to have a GDPR compliant uh, pol privacy policy and have a removal system on your blog at a minimum and then you also need to include a cookie policy with data consent tools. And all of this might sound like a bunch of mumbo jumbo right now, it might be garbled. You're like, what is he talking about? Well, I'm going to show you step by step a great tool, um, a free tool you can use to kind of get a head start on this. The key thing is if you have any kind of complex data collection, um, tools on your site or some kind of big data processing thing that you do on your site to where you manage people's personal data and you have people from the European Union that you are collecting that data on then you must take action and you know talk to a lawyer and figure out what you need to have to protect yourself most blogs though most people that are bloggers really don't have to go to those like so. Most people that are just regular bloggers like me who sell uh, information products, might sell some physical products from your blog, or you're just doing affiliate marketing, then if you follow what I'm showing you here, then you should be 99% good. The reason I say 99% and not 100% is because, like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not an expert in this, but I can help you get most of the way there with the, what we're going to go through in the video here. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, now we're inside WordPress right now, and we're gonna we're gonna go through some steps where we're gonna install a plugin. Well, you say, well, what's a plugin gonna do to help me with this? Well, there are some great free tools out there that have been built to really help you implement a privacy policy. 
um, implement a set of tools on your blog that allow you to have people request their data and remove it from your site. And this is WordPress specific. This is making your WordPress blog GDPR compliant for the most part. Like I said, it's not a 100% solution. It's about a 99% solution. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to see if you go in here to your plugin section and add new that you go here to search plugins and type in GDPR and you're going to see a bunch of different tools and I've really tested all of these um, one of the one of the better ones is the GDPR plugin here but it's a little bit more complicated and it's it's really just hard to set up um, so what I've found is that the GDPR framework plugin here is really really good and uh, I will show you, I'm going to walk you through setting it up and all the things that go with it that you need to look at when you're setting it up, the things you need to customize specifically for you and your business. Okay, so we go ahead and install this. And um, once it's installed, we're going to activate it. And the great thing about this plugin is it has a setup wizard and it really becomes easy. So if you're, if you're fairly... Uh, used to WordPress, you've done privacy policy on your site before, you've created pages, things like that, then this should be rel relatively easy. If you're new to WordPress, you're new to getting started with all this stuff, then um, pay attention and just pause the video when you need to and come back through it and walk through this step by step, okay? So we're gonna run the setup wizard and it's really gonna take us through setting up the whole privacy policy thing. The great thing is it has a WordPress site owner's guide to GDPR that you can link, click on the link, you can go to, read it, and really get well versed on the you know, intricacies of WordPress and how it collects data and how you need to be prepared to um, manage that data. So we're going to get click the get started button here and it just basically reads through here and says that, hey, we're not lawyers, um, but we're, we're going to do the, the best we can. If you need professional help, contact le legal professionals to help you with this. Like I said, for the most part, that's not necessary. If you follow everything here, you should be good. If you're a normal, everyday blogger, uh, most of this should, should be good enough for you for uh, managing people from the European Union, whether you live there or not. This all will cover you. So click on I accept. And that's basically a disclaimer. Now, the, the first thing it's going to have you do is it's going to have you create a privacy tools page. What is a privacy tool, tools page? A privacy tools page is a page that's going to allow people to basically request the either the removal of their data from your site or just to see what data you have of theirs on your site if they are a registered user. Right. If they haven't registered on your site, more than likely you don't have their data. If you have their email address and you're mailing them from your mailing list, you might have them on your site. So that's something that you have to do. But you can see here there's two options to set up this page. <coughs> excuse me. And you can select an existing page or create a new page. Either way, you can customize this because it basically is, is run through a short code that's put onto a blank page on your site. And you can go... And customize the data before and after that short code um, and I'll show you that here in a second but you can read more about the the privacy tools page and how it works here and I encourage you to do that but go ahead and make it easy automatically create this page we're gonna click Save okay and now this page has been configured and you can take a look at it now this is page has only been created in a draft it hasn't been officially published because it wants you to go in take a look at it and see if you need to manage any settings make any changes before you're happy with it okay but if you basically click on this link and I'm going to open it up in a new tab and take a look at it and you see here it's identified me as Mike at archeryhunting.com that's my login for this site and you can see here it has download your data you can click here but because I'm admin it has data de deletion is disabled because I'm an admin but if you were just coming to visit this site and <clears throat> as you can see here it's a brand new site and just a bunch of rough stuff on it um, just as a, a test right now but this is um, how that data privacy data tools uh, page will be set up and you can download users information here as a table or as a JSON file 
okay so we click that off and now we're going to continue here into basically talking about we talked about some of the things the right to view the right to access data well right here the right to view and export data right here one of the key components of the GDPR and you see what the option is here select what happens if a customer wishes to view or export their personal data so they go to your privacy tools page and you can allow them to automatically download data automatically download data and notify me via email or just notify me via email so I can come in and manually approve it I have been choosing automatically download data and notify me via email so if they have the email address that that is allowing them if they can log on to your site then they have this ability to do this to download their data and be notified via email so that's what I'm doing and then you put an email address in here to be notified and I'm just throwing that email in there real quick for this demonstration and then it has the right to be forgotten that's another key component of the GDPR a user has the right to be forgotten which means you can anonymize their data or delete it it's two different options so anonymizing basically means that you keep the data say say somebody came to your site and they created a bunch of WordPress posts as a guest blogger on your site but then they wanted to be removed from your site they don't want to be associated with your site anymore but they agreed they don't want to delete the blog posts that they created on your site so instead of deleting those blog posts you have the ability to anonymize anonymize data um, as opposed to automatically anonymize data or delete the data so I'm choosing as the default here and this can be changed for, on an individual basis automatically anonymize data and notify me via email that somebody is removing their data so I'm doing that and then of course once we do that we're going to click Save and move on to the next step which is our privacy policy page and much like the privacy tools page here you can automatically create a GDPR compliant privacy policy and cover all the key elements yeah elements elements of of the GDPR in your privacy policy and of course here we have the option to use an existing page or create a new page I highly recommend based on everything that this creates I highly recommend creating a new privacy policy page so this doesn't get written over a bunch of other stuff that you have on a, a pre-existing page and go down here and generate privacy policy and this was down here is where you would fill in your company legal name and for demonstration purposes I am just typing this in and company location I got a pick this is where you pick um, if you're outside the EU I'm sorry here I put United States and down here I can put the representative contact name and put in the my contact phone number okay so down here you have the data protection authority and that data perfect protection authority if you are outside the EU you must designate an EU country's data protection authority to be your supervisory authority remember we talked about the people that are regulating this who are enforcing this this uh, regulation are a supervisory authority you get to choose who is your super supervisory authority and there's a whole list of contacts here and you can fill in this information if you're from the United States I recommend just keeping the data that they have in here already and using that as your supervisory authority and then moving on to the next step the next step is assigning a data pr protection officer and really if you wondering if you need to have a data protection officer We'll click on this link to see if you need a data protection officer more times than not you do not need a data protection officer especially if you are a solo entrepreneur you're just a one person solo uh, business you know solo operator 
you are the data protection officer. You're the owner. You're the president. You're the you're the secretary. You're everything, right? So you don't have to appoint a data protection officer. And of course, you do want to have a terms and conditions page. If you don't have one, I suggest going to the Starter Academy site. And if you're not on it already, go take a look at our terms and conditions, and you might want to um, emulate that on your own site to have a terms and condition and make sure it applies to you and your site and your business um, so that um, as you read through it you'll see it's a very clear cut uh, as far as that goes so you, if you have a terms and conditions page click on this and you can find it on the site and I have a terms of service page and I click save and that's basically going to build my privacy policy and the privacy policy is now configured and you can take a look at that page here. And now the privacy policy page is going to need to be modified. You're going to have to go in there and there you can see here the privacy policy here and all the different sections down through the privacy policy. And you go down through and you're going to see different parts of this that have brackets like this and to do. It basically areas that it wants you to look at to make sure that the information is good and there's not something that needs to be added and there's not something that needs to be taken away. Most of this is pretty straightforward and works for WordPress users. It has nothing, uh, you know, unless you are actually running um, a, you know, say you have, um, you know, running your own merchant account. If you have a merchant account, and you're collecting users credit card information on your site then that would definitely need to be added to this privacy policy if you're using a third-party tool for that you do not need to worry about that because that third-party tool you just need to make sure that the tool you're using is GDPR compliant PayPal stripe all those are already ahead of the game on this they're they're already GDPR compliant and and you're probably getting an updated privacy policy from them as well. So as you go down through, you continue to look for your to-dos. And like I said, if there's even though there's a, an extra line here to do, if you don't have something to fill in there, then don't fill it in. And like I said, I recommend going to the Starter Academy and looking at our privacy policy and seeing if you need to add anything to your site based on the to-dos that we've gone through and filled this information in already. And especially down here, in the section where it says who else can access your personal data and now in that section we look here and you go to my site at Starter Academy you can see what I did here it says who else can access your personal data and down here we have things like our processing partners are Google Analytics, Google AdWords, the Drip email marketing service, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, connected third parties who use tools like thrivecart.com, paykickstart.com, convertflow.com, and I put as a connected third party, once again, I put my drip email marketing service. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what you're gonna put in there. So we'll go back and just continue. Like I said, the last thing you're gonna do here is down here where it says contact information and supervisory authority, you're going to put your, you can put a way to contact you in this section, whether it's through phone number or if you want them to contact you through your contact form on your site. So you don't want to put all your personal information in there for, for being contacted. Well, direct them to your contact page so they can fill in your form and contact you about your privacy policy or about anything pertaining to your their information and your privacy tools. The one thing I do recommend with your privacy policy here, there's two things you need to know about this. It's very important. First off, down here, last modification. You need to put your date in there for the last time it was modified. And when it's modified, you need to notify everybody that on your mailing list, anybody has contact information with you, you need to notify them about the privacy policy being updated. In fact, even people that ask not to be emailed anymore, if you have their information on your site, 
they need to be notified that your privacy policy has changed. And this is only if you're making major changes. If you're changing wording a little bit or trying to make it clearer, that's not really changing the privacy policy. It's when you're changing how you handle their information, that's a change to your privacy policy. And when you make those changes, you want to make sure you change your date on this page, okay, and notify everyone who's associated, whose data is associated with your site. Okay, so that's a big the big thing you need to know about the privacy policy. Second thing is your privacy tools. It'd be a good idea to do a link up here near the top so you don't have to scroll the whole way down to the bottom. Have a link up here and also change this here because you see it didn't put the name up there, there of the business. To check that it should say archeryhunting.com is committed to safeguarding your privacy. So look for errors like that in it so up here I would would do that but also ha want to have a link to that privacy tools page so people don't have to look for it okay so I have a link to that there and then a link to both your privacy tools and your privacy policy down in the foot of your site so make sure if you have you see there's nothing here right now but once this site is configured and up and running it will have much like here on the Starter Academy site, if you go down here, both the privacy policy and privacy tools, privacy policy down in the footer of the site. So anybody can access it when they need to. Okay, so that's that's your privacy policy. Read through it. Read through everything in there, and you're going to really get a good idea of what is required from the GDPR. It's really a basic basically telling you all the things you're responsible for through the GDPR and is all in your privacy policy. Okay, the next thing we're going to do then, of course, is move on and we're going to hit save. And the next thing that's a big part of GDPR is forms and consent. Anytime somebody sends you their personal information, um, people from the European Union, they can give consent for your data for for uh, you having their data and then they can also remove that consent okay and that's where that privacy tools page comes in but in your forms you need to be able to give consent what you're going to see from this plugin is you're going to see that even on like your comments that before somebody can submit a comment to you that they have to accept your terms and conditions and your privacy policy before they move forward that they consent to submitting their data to you when they submit a, just a, a comment on a blog post okay and now this this uh, this plugin integrates with some other plugins and one of the one of the plugins that integrates with it automatically is contact form 7 which makes it easy to automatically add check boxes with your your uh, terms terms uh, page and your privacy policy automatically to every form you create when it's done through contact form 7 and there's other tools as well if you have your own custom form solution or you're using something external like type form or whatever they might have gdpr tools built in already so check with that um, if you have custom forms in your website you can click this box here and then learn how to integrate custom forms this is a good thing to read if you are using opt-in forms in your site like using drip email marketing mailchimp convert kit anything like any uh, any kind of email marketing service because you are going to need to have consent when people uh, go to opt-in and so that's a whole another thing altogether when it comes to getting consent when you're email marketing and I'm going to do a, uh, a bit of training on that here in the very near future as well so I'm going to click that off and I'm going to click continue here and the next thing we're just going to talk about is integrations, theme compatibility, and how you need to make sure that the links to the privacy policy and privacy tools pages are linked in your site's footer like I just talked about. And after that, go ahead and click continue. And of course then we are all done. And there's a bunch of additional information, a knowledge base, site owner's guide to GDPR. There's just a bunch of stuff you can read on it to read up on it. I encourage you to read up on it to be, become you know, well-versed in the regulation and how it affects you and your business. And then once you're done that, go back to the dashboard for the plugin. 
and I went back to the main dashboard instead and go over to the tools section and in the tools section is where this plugins uh, settings are kept down here where it says privacy so you go to tools and privacy and you can see here is the plugin and if you wanted to you can restart the setup wizard and go through that again if you need to but down here you can go through all the settings and make sure everything is the way you want it on each part the consent portion and you can change to have uh, custom consent types that you can use short codes and add to different parts of your site if you want to add additional consent things because of specific things you're doing on your site you can see down here this text will be displayed to your data subjects on the privacy tools page to use this website you accepted our privacy policy if you wish to withdraw your acceptance please use the delete my data button below so you can customize that if you want to okay and data subjects here and you can go in here when somebody requests their data be deleted or something and they don't want to use the they don't, can't use your privacy tools page for whatever reason you can go in here add their email address in here click search and if see what data you find if any on your site okay and then you can get that data and anonymize it remove it give it to the person who, who's requesting it etc okay and then of course your privacy policy items you can um, go ahead and adjust those items and edit them as you need um, as we talked about previously you can uh, update them here and they will be they should be automatically updated on your page but of course the last thing you need to do now as you've gone through all this the last thing you need to do is go to your pages and in your list of pages go to each one of those because they are still drafts and you must go into them and go to the edit function here and go to the page and publish it so and do that after you've edited as we talked about previously once you've edited it and make sure everything is squared away and everything good to go go ahead and go into it and publish the page okay now we're going to move into the next section of this which is cookies you can see here what came up we're looking for cookie consent now there's a bunch of different tools that have been published out there um, that come up for this and you have here GDPR cookie compliance plugin but probably the plugin that is uh, the biggest one on the web that's been you can see here this one here has over a hundred thousand downloads active active installations this one over here is cookie notice has over 600,000 so the one that I prefer is the cookie consent plugin so go ahead and click on install now and click on activate now what this plugin is going to do for you is it's going to allow you to if you've gone to a website and they it is said um, you know you can you know this site uses cookies do you accept the use of cookies on this site and you click the word you click the accept box and then you move on I'm sure you've seen this on sites before if you haven't well that's what it does okay and with the EU users you need to have cookie consent now to try to keep from focusing strictly on everybody on your site there are other ways that you can um, ensure that this cookie consent is only shown to people from the European Union and we're going to get into that here in a second and show you how you can not just only uh, allow cookie consent but you can also ensure that this cookie consent is only shown to the people that need to see it and how we do that is we go back into our add new plugin section in WordPress and we go back to the search bar here and we're going to type in geo IP and that should be enough to bring the plugin up 
Yep, and it's the Geo IP Detect plugin that we're looking for. So you see, you type in Geo IP Detect, and you're still going to get the same thing. And you can see here, even our Cookie Consent plugin comes up because it has um, the Geo IP Detection plugin integrated with it. So you're going to go ahead and click on the Install Now for the Geo. IP detection plugin. You're going to then click activate. And you're going to notice we didn't set up our cookie consent plugin yet because we need the geo IP detection set up before we can move ahead. So we're going to go up here after we install the plugin, and now we're going to click on the install now. And what it's going to do now is you're going to test the IP detection lookup. And click lookup. You can see here it detected me and where I'm at right now, York, Pennsylvania in the United States my longitude and latitude and uh, the time zone that I'm in. So the plugin is active and working. Okay, so you can change your database source and get uh, more current databases and and um, if you have like Cloudflare, uh, you're using the free version of Cloudflare, you can um, upgrade a little bit and use their GeoIP database, which is very, very current, but it's still, uh, you know, pretty, pretty current. But um, either way, it's a it's a great plugin, and you can't beat free. So the next thing we need to do, okay, now that our plugin's set up, we can go back to our options here. You can actually go through and see some of the data source options that you can choose from. You see down here, you can choose uh, Cloudflare, Amazon, AWS, CloudFront, um, and you can do that. But you can use uh, stick with the MaxMind GeoIP Light City um, detection, or you can go to a higher paid service. There's actually up here, there's a city and country database commercial version. Um, so there's several different options. Um, it's best if you can, if you have like a Cloudflare account, Amazon or AWS CloudFront account, you have those, you want to tap into those resources and take advantage of them. Um, you can do that and click save and then you will have to you know go ahead and fill in your information for that to get a better uh, you know database a more current uh, optimized database okay now down here where it says general options it's going to have one key thing here if you are running a caching plugin WP super cache W3 total cache Zen cache etc you want to uh, make sure that this here is clicked on okay and then once you do that go ahead and click save and that's all you need to do so you can always and you see here you can always update the data source manually if you don't want to wait monthly you can come in here and click on update now and update your data source okay now let's go back to what we originally started with which was our cookie consent remember the whole thing with the GDPR and the cookie consent law was in place before the GDPR but it, GDPR just went uh, a lot further than just cookie consent now and but the cookie consent thing still is in place and even more so now with GDPR so you also need to make sure that this cookie consent is in place on your blog and here with the, the geo IP detection, it allows you to show this only to the people that need to see it. So if you go into your settings, you go down, scroll down, you're gonna see here the geo IP detection plugins there, but your cookie consent menu item is in your settings menu. So click on cookie consent, go here, and you want to uh, see close on click, yes, select to show this notification only on the first page the user visits and yes I'm going to do that um, not going to ask them for their uh, approval cookie approval over and over again as they go through the site um, you can ex selectively uh, exclude pages um, do not check that 
But what you do want to do now that you have the Geo IP Detect plugin installed is you can exclude zones. Um, you can specify, you know, which areas of the world to exclude from displaying the notifications. So if you say I am not going to show this in Africa, Antarctica, Asia, North America, o Oceania, and South America, the only place that I'm going to show this is in Europe. Okay so part of the European Union that's it so it, everything else is pretty much set up for exactly how it needs to be so go ahead and click save changes and once you do that you have the basic part of the plugin set up now we want to go into content and you can see here where you can specify what is written out here on um, on your site the notification text um, this site uses cookies and more info more info page your cookie policy you can see here the cookie policy was created when you installed this page okay so as you go down you can um, add your own page in here if you want to add more information and you can have it open up a new tab etc and then your accept text is okay thanks um, but it's a good idea to make sure this site uses cookies please provide your consent to continue all right and that's it that's what you want to do click save changes and then of course up here it also has styles and you can put your position where you want it to show top bar bottom bar I like to have it in the uh, bottom bar um, everything else I would keep the same as you use it and you see it you might want to change it but I, I recommend just leaving it the way it's set up in the base settings and you will be good that there is it now if you want an example of what this what this looks like okay you can see here here's an example of the times in uh, the UK um, their cookie policy down here at the bottom of the page the times and the Sunday times and selected third parties use cookies on this site to improve performance for analytics and for advertising by browsing this site you're agreeing to this for more information see our privacy and cookie policy this is a very good consent cookie consent clause so things like this as I gave you an example previously um, when we were doing the plugin uh, settings things like this are probably better to be written for your cookie pol your uh, cookie policy than just that quick blurb that I I did so pay attention to things like this now when you click click close by it says you know by browsing the site you're agreeing to this so if you continue on there um, you could close and move on now another example is this site cookies in you uh, of course this is meant to be an example this website uses cookies to ensure you get the best experience on our website and then has a learn more link and you say over here got it so it's cookie consent anyway that is those are two examples and once you have that set up obviously that really covers your site for the most part but there are a couple other things that you need to be aware of so we're going to jump into the Kind of the thing that everybody has on their site and it's a very very quick quick thing to do and that's google analytics almost everybody uses google analytics to measure and track visitors to their sites and it's important to know who you know what kind of traffic you're getting and be able to measure that and we all like to have that but still google analytics also has to comply with gdpr so give me a second here and we'll jump into google analytics but before we do that really quickly I want you to see something here when when your cookie policy is created 
by the cookie, cookie consent plugin. It creates a very uh, rudimentary uh, cookie policy. So if you look at it here and I open it up in a new tab here, you can see here this site uses cookies and it really doesn't give that much information. It's kind of just one big paragraph. I suggest coming into your cookie policy page, editing it, and uh, adjusting it, and even taking this link out of here. So uh, you can just basically expand upon your cookie policy and uh, ba basically just write, you know, refer them to your, your uh, privacy policy as well in this content. Um, have a link to your privacy policy to your privacy tools page as well on your cookie policy page okay so now let's take a look in Google Analytics pop over here and you can see here I'm, I'm Google Analytics um, from the get started net site and up here at the top it has a bar it says we launched a new version of our data processing terms if you service users in the European economic area are otherwise subject to the GDPR, please review these terms and provide related contact information. Learn more. So you can click on learn more, but what it wants you to do is it wants you to come into your admin section. And in your admin section, where it has your tracking info, you click on the tracking info section there is a thing here data collection data retention and click on your data collection and here you know you're gonna have information as far as data collections concerned data retention you can see here it has stuff that is GDPR specific so you come into your admin go to your property settings uh, user management down to tracking info and data retention and you see here uh, you may change your retention period for data that you send and associated with cookies user identifiers etc these controls do not affect most standard reporting changes settings take effect after 24 hours and it says here these settings will take effect on 25 May 2018 and is obviously for the GDPR. Now, user and event, da event data retention. How long are you going to keep this data? And you can choose. Don't automatically expire. I would recommend choosing an expiration so you're not holding on to that data for that long, 26 months. Or if you really aren't using your data after a year, you can switch it to 14 months. Once you do that, um, you see here, you reset the retention period if a user comes and visits your site again. And that's what you're doing. So go ahead and reset on new activity and then click save. And that is it. That's all you have to do in Google Anal Analytics to uh, update your privacy and data processing terms with use with Google Analytics. Now obviously every other tool that you use has some kind of GDPR policy. I highly recommend for whatever tool you use, especially if you're using a email marketing service, find out how they're addressing GDPR and see how you need to uh, begin using that tool um, to apply to the GDPR and be compliant. Okay, I know this video is long. I know there's a lot of stuff. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you now have a good grasp of what you need to do for GDPR. And of course, like I said in the very beginning, I'm not a lawyer. All I'm doing is giving you the best course of action possible for setting up your blog, making sure that you have the policies in place to protect yourself and protect your users who are coming from the European Union. Once again, I'm Mike Johnson. I uh, thank you for watching this long video, and I appreciate it, and I will talk to you again soon.